Variables are absolutely necessary when, for instance, we want to keep track of points or lives or anything else that could change during a game. But they can also be extremely powerful in that they help to generalize the code a bit. And to, to explain that better, I need a game that is a bit more advanced, a bit more complex. So I'm going to expand my current one here from having just one ball, I'm going to have five. And the containers, uh, the square, I'm going to have just two of those. Now they are rather large, so to make room for... No, first I'm just going to fix the numbers, ball container. One, and two, and three, and four, and five and square container one and square container two, two. And still the points are correctly there. And then in the CSS, I'm going to make those um, sprites a bit smaller, let's say 10. And here I'm going to need to make every single kind of ball container sprite. I'm having ball container spread one there, and then I'm going to copy that to two and three and four, and I'm just copying it into all five, so I'll speed this up a bit. And so I also need all the ball containers, ball container one. Now they're all on top of each other with these uh, top and left positions. All of them in the same place. I'm also going to do the square container one here and change the size so it's a bit smaller. And I'm going to do also the square container two. So a lot of copy paste here and some of it I'm going to regret. For instance, I want the left to be set by a class. So I'm adding some classes here, calling them position one. That has a left of five, maybe, and a position two. Has a position of 15, maybe. And I'm going to copy and make a position three, four, five, six, how many? 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85. 75, 85, and that's position two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So now I need to, my idea is that I can find any of my ball containers, say ball container tree, and then I can give that a position, a random position, say five, and that should move it to position five. But as we have learned, doing this will not work. Because is there position five? Uh, yeah, that's it's there, and it's empty. Do I need to reload? Sometimes a lot of changes can make it mess up a bit in brackets. We'll see. Five. There it is, and there's it still doesn't work because it's of course disabled because of position. Have I been drinking? This should be left. Luckily, if I have a lot of made a lot of mistakes, I can uh, I hold uh, Control or maybe it's Command on Mac, and I hold it N and I double click each one, and then I just write the new value, and all of them change at once. 
let's retry and give it a five, position 5 and left 45 VV because it's overridden by the container here. Okay, so I need to remove all of those left on every single container. You know what? I'm also going to remove the top. Now, position five, we'll move that one there. They are all behind each other here and in, in the same position because none of them have any uh, position left or any position clasp. But luckily I know how to give every single one of them a position. But right now I'm just going to work with ball container one and then we'll see how the power of variables can make that even cooler. So uh, this one's with clicking the ball and all that I'm just going to ignore right now. What I want is I want all the balls to fall down at different positions and when they reach the bottom they should start from the top at another position. I've done this before and right now I'm just doing it with ball number one, ball container one. So let's try and first we select a document, create selector ball container one and class list add falling. That should make it fall continuously. Fantastic. And because it falls continuously, as I'm fairly sure it does, infinite, yes, I can make an event listener that once it reaches the bottom, an event listener, animation, iteration. And that will be a function here, reach bottom. Just control log it to make sure that it works. Reach the bottom. So every time this reaches the bottom, I get a text. I think that this was in. Uh, no, there's some. Document query selector. Ah, it's the old ones. Uh, let's get rid of them like this. So it reaches the bottom. Every time it reaches the bottom, then I want to find a random position. So let my number be a random. Position between what was my um, possibilities here. They were position one to nine, including both. So that would be nine minus one plus one, that's nine times nine plus one. And I'm using that number as a class. So Selecting the ball container, and adding that class, class list add position, and then I need to remember to concatenate the number onto that, and this should give me random positions every single time, but the problem is, of course, that I don't remove them, so I just get more and more and more positions. So I need to clear all of them. That was the annoying bit that we found. So, and I need to do that before. Ball container one, clusters to remove, position one. And I'm just going to do it on one line because then I can copy it like 
you can always go to duplicate and then you can duplicate it. It's two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, and five. And it is not ball container one, two, three, four, five. It's still ball container one, but it is position one, position two, position three, position four, position five. And there would be six, seven, eight, nine, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So now it has only one position. And the reason why I can't just remove all, all classes, just that class list equal to, I can try that. Then we will see why it doesn't work. If I just add class list equal to this position, and see, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. It falls once, and then once it has ended falling, it sets the position two. But it should also have, see, it should also have the falling class. So, um, unfortunately, I have to do it this cumbersome way. But it's okay. I can live with that. Because it works. And it has random positions. So, while this code may not seem that complex, it's quite long and there's a lot of it. And just think about having to repeat this for four other balls for four other balls and two squares, and then also have to make the click functions for five balls and two squares. Simply too much work. But variables can help us, and there are several different ways, both in what we could call like a temporary scratch pad, and also something called generalization, where we use a variable to make the code even more flexible than it already is. When you have made this code work, just this one function reach bottom for ball container one and all the CSS changes and HTML changes, then you are ready for the next lessons on other uses of variables.